Hello, welcome to Higher Ground Gaming. This is Eric. Today we're going to do something a little different today. We haven't played Digital Diamond Baseball in a while, but uh, recently we just got the newest version on um, version 8, um, 0 .0 on the Steam uh, library there. You know, Clinton Parks plays it on Steam, and um, I think our Red Sox fan does too, or I know he plays this game, along, among others. Um... But yeah, we decided to uh, to look this up again since we hadn't uh, played it in a while, and uh, yeah, we're very pleased with it so far. We've just played a few games, um, but it looks like it's very easy to use. We haven't uploaded any pictures yet or logos or any of that stuff. Uh, we've just been playing a few games from, well, as you can see here, uh, from '75, 2018, 19, and Greatest Teams League. Like just trying some stuff out. Um, and we're very pleased with some of the new features that are on it. Um, some of the ones that we've noticed anyway, since we had it last, I think we just had version seven was the last one we had, um, six or seven. I think we might've had seven. Um, we got the version from, you know, digital diamond, uh, baseball, the company themselves. We didn't uh, get it on steam, but this one we got off of steam. So we decided to check it out. It was uh, on sale, I think around 14 bucks or so, something like that. But it was a good deal. So uh, we did play one game from the 1975 season, which we'll show you here. Um, again, playing as the Red Sox, of course. So let's see if we can, uh, let's go to our, let's see here, season overview here. All right, that's so. Yeah, we played just one game for the Red Sox. That wasn't what I wanted. I wanted to show you the team uh, box score view. There we go. So some very nice features on this, which we really like. Um, we like this right here, the newspaper box score, and then you got your extended box score, your play by play, and your scoring plays, which is very nice. Uh, but let's go to the game that we played. So we played game one of the 1975 Red Sox season. Uh, we played this game, very exciting game. Um, Red Sox scored three runs in the second. Uh, Milwaukee came back with two in the fifth. Red Sox added another one in the fifth to make it 4-2. And then in the eighth, uh, the Red Sox bullpen, after we uh, took Tiant out, uh, basically coughed up the lead and made it a 4-4 game, but then uh, Red Sox pulled ahead in the bottom of the uh, eighth to win it five to four. So that was pretty cool. Um, some interesting players in, the, in uh, for the Red Sox. Uh, I think Carlton Fisk starts off the 1975 season on the DL, so he didn't play. Jim Rice is on the roster, but he's not on the uh, opening day lineup. Um, and uh, so we had Bob Montgomery catching. And um, Juan Bonica is in left field. Um, also, interesting enough, we have Tony C Tony C in his last season in the majors here, um, which was pretty cool. He had a good day. He was actually the MVP of the game, which we'll show you over here. So the scoring started off. Tony C, uh, let's see, swung on that, absolutely crushed the left field. He hit a two-run Homer to put the Red Sox on top. Actually, solo Homer put the Red Sox on top. One nothing. Uh, just trying to figure through this. Uh, yeah, this is kind of interesting, but kind of weird at the same point. So, oh yeah, so that was the uh, bottom of the second. The Red Sox scoring there. Uh, they also added another run. Uh, let's see here. I think, yeah, uh, Doug Griffin, who is in the open day lineup also. Um, I think Danny Doyle wasn't on the team yet. I think they might have got him later in the season. And uh, let's see, uh, Montgomery scored, Bob Montgomery scored the second run. So that was 2 nothing there. And then go down to here, in the bottom of the eighth. Um, let's see here. Evans, so Evans tagged up on a sacrifice fly 
from, uh, I thought it was from, yeah, yeah, I know it's from, uh, from Tony C here. I just don't see, oh, maybe it is Montgomery. Bishop is lead, I mean, yeah. It delivers, yeah, I guess it was. So it was Montgomery. I thought, it, for some reason, I thought it was, uh, Tony C that scored. So he must have had, a, yeah, Canigliaro must have had a, uh, an RBI here. Ah, there you go. So that's what it was. For some reason, I thought he had the uh, game-winning RBIs, which I think I told Al Red Sox fan. Um, he did, but he did not, actually. He did have an R two RBIs, just the other one was in the bottom of the fifth. So, technically, um, uh, Bob Montgomery had the uh, game-winning RBI there. So let's go back to here. So, so if we look at here... Yeah, Tony C right there. Two to four, two RBIs, but Montgomery actually. Uh, Griffin also had two RBIs. He had a two-run single, and Montgomery had the game-winning RBI there, which I don't know if it shows it on here. I don't know if it shows game-winning RBIs. I don't see it there. But I do. Uh, it's got some nice little features in here. Five Red Sox and um, Rockies, five for 11, runs in scoring position. Red Sox just two for nine. Um, so, very cool. Player of the game was still Tony Conigliaro, which was nice to see because... All right, so there you go there. So, all right. So, let's go back here, and we're going to play a game. Okay, game number two of the season here. So, scheduled game. All right, and eventually we are, we are going to add uh, photos and everything in here once we figure, remember how to do that and everything. As we like to mod it and everything. All right, so let's see here. So we're going to play this game right here. So game two, and it's ML4, so I'm, that might have been, been um, I'm not sure why they use ML4. That's just the abbreviation for the uh, Milwaukee Brewers in 1975. So here we go, the starting lineups. And these are starting lineups for the, uh, you know, as-played lineups here. So we're going to go with those. So we have Bill Lee, Spaceman Lee going against Pete Broberg. All right, so let's play it up here. So does pregame transactions, any transactions that occurred. So that's another thing, too, is that they had the full database of the transactions that occurred during the year. So it's pretty, pretty cool. Um, nice feature of this game. So we got Bill Lee, lefty against Pete Broberg, which I remember him being on Seattle later on. Uh, 75 was a little before my time as far as getting into baseball, as I was only probably six years old during most of the season. Well, about half of the season. Seven in August, so... Yeah, maybe half the season or so I was uh, seven, but still not quite into baseball. Probably not until, like, like late 76, 77, somewhere around there. Anyway, uh, let's see here. So let's take a look at the line up here. So this is the Brewers. We're just going to let the computer manage them. And... Let's see here. Uh, okay. You know, the Red Sox lineup here, we're just going to keep it as is here. Again, we have Bob Montgomery starting. Uh, Tim McCarver is actually on the... He may not be on it yet. Actually, here we go. Yeah, I think he is. Not batting stat. Oh, bench right there. There you go. Yeah, so Tim McCarver was on the uh, line in the opening day lineup too. Well, not lineup, but the uh, roster. He only had 22 plate appearances before he was released, I believe, but he hit 381. So, I guess he decided to retire because I don't know why you release somebody who's hitting 380, 381, <laughs> especially when Fisk wasn't back in. Maybe when Fisk came back, they got rid of McCarver to make room for him, possibly. But uh, there you go. So, those are those are the Red Sox. And Jim Rice, he had 613 plate appearances, but again, not in the opening lineup yet. So, I imagine he's probably soon going to be in the opening lineup. Um, I mean, in the uh, starting lineup because he did have 316, 613 plate appearances. So, 
So, all right, so let's get it started. Um, yeah, so I'll try to point out some of the features that I do like in the game as we play it. So this is not really cha changed. Alright, but uh, the graphics have improved in this too. It's got some... I think this has changed a little bit in here. Showing the stats from uh, all, you know, the, the year. And then showing the, the green ones, uh, the current stats for the for the replay. I really like this right here. So you can see it in the game as it's going on. And what I like too is that uh, on the right side here, the uh, which says the same thing with the average OPS at bats, home runs, RBIs, that kind of stuff, is it uh, shows you the again the season stats in blue and then in green the uh, you know current stats, and it does update right after each at bat, which I really like about that. And it's got the bullpen here on the bottom, um, and then the left hand side on the bottom here. This is the part the heart of the engine here, which I really like. It takes the uh, basically takes the pitchers. Um, well, these are just the pitcher stats. Um, again, the green is going to be what the replay has, and it gives splits in here, which is really, which is really cool too. Um, but I'm not sure how you look at the card, the actual card. Um, but anyway, what it, basically what it does is it each play the player and the batter and the pitcher both have cards um, from zero to nine nine nine. And they basically uh, combine them in order to, f you know, figure out the, uh, you know, the percentages of striking out. So, so it's all percentage based, which I really like. And you roll three, uh, three die, three d10 die to get it uh, the outcome, which is really cool. So all right, so Bill Lee is on the hill. So in the outfield we have Benitez, Lynn, and Evans. And then in the infield, Petroselli, Burleson, Griffin, and Yastrzemski. And behind the plate, Bob Montgomery. Bill Lee on the hill. And, all right, so the lead off is Bob. So Bob Coluco, Colucio, is leading off for the uh, Milwaukee Brewers, followed by jo center fielder, followed by John Briggs in left. Hank Garen, the DH, in his next to last season. So there you go. Didn't have a great season, but you know, only hit 234 with 12 overs, 60 runs bet in, but he's getting close to retirement. And George the Boomer Scott will come to the Red Sox soon, in a couple of years. I think in, in 77. Um, well, back to the Red Sox, I should say. Uh, is bull back clean up and play first. Don Money, the third baseman, bats fifth. Followed by Sixto Lescano, one of my favorite Milwaukee Brewers. Um, plays right, just because of his name, pretty much. <laughs> uh, batting seventh is Daryl Porter behind the plate. Pedro Garcia will bat eighth and play second. And Robin Young, which I think this may be his rookie season, or close to it, um, batting ninth and playing short. So there you go. So that's the Milwaukee Brewers. So let's get the game underway. So you have your dice roll. And that's going to be an out. It's going to be a ground ball to short. Burleson fields it, and Caluso is out number one. Next up, John Briggs in 297. Well, hit 297. Three homers, five runs batted in, and just 74 at bats. And Lynn will make the catch for out number two, so two up and two down. So Hank Aaron up there now. He hit 234 with 12 homers and 60 runs batted in. Here's the pitch by Lee. Oh, and that's going to be a single. So, two out base runner for Milwaukee. And then you have your stats here. Oops, your percentages. I'm not sure exactly how these go. I think that's a steal percentage and running speed four and then must be a lead chance of getting a lead 19 percent that kind of stuff and then if you look at the uh, fielders 
error percentages, and then range. And that's one thing about this is the, uh, the range rating and the arm ratings and stuff like that. I, I think the lower number is the, is the better number, I think, in this, I want to say. Yeah, it looks like it is. Um, yeah. And then, the, and then the arm rating, the lower number is better. Because Evans has a great arm, so it would be a 1. Benica is not so great, 3. And Lynn has a, a 2 rating. So not very much of a range. I think it just goes 1, 2, and 3 for the arm ratings. And possibly, uh looks like the uh, the range ratings, I think. Oh, actually, the range goes to 4. Or possibly 5, maybe. But, uh, yeah, not a lot of variation in that. So... So, all right, so and I like how it gives the splits here, too, against left-handed pitching and right-handed pitching below the batters. And then same thing with the pitchers. That's kind of neat. I like to see that. All right, so two down, Aaron on first, and George the Boomer Scott up there now, hitting two, hit 285 with 36 homers, 109 runs bet in. It's an excellent year for the Boomer. Oh, and that's going to be a double. No, it's not, actually. The last roll. And ground ball at the middle. Speared by Griffin. Lots of time. And throws out Scott easily. So no runs, one hit, one man left. All right. So now we have... Uh, and we'll go over uh, Bill Lee's stats, too. I forgot to do that. Anyway, Pete Broberg on the hill. ERA of 4.13. Record of 14 and 16. Whip of 1.48. As you can see there. Uh... For the Red Sox, Juan Benica is the lead off and play left, followed by Fred Lynn in center. Yastrzemski will bat third and play first. Tony Clangero is the DH batting cleanup. Again, you can see he struggled. Um, he had only 123 on the season, but so that was nice to see him get a... Only well, hit two runs, two home runs, and hit one yesterday, so that was cool to see. So, yeah, and only had 57 at-bats. So Rico Petroselli in bat fifth and play third, followed by Dwight Evans in right. Bob Montgomery bats cleanup. I mean, bat seventh and kept behind the plate, followed by Rick Burleson, the shortstop, and Doug Griffin, the second baseman. So when Fisk and uh, Rice come back in the lineup, that's going to really strengthen the lineup there. Um, Rice will play left, and Fisk will, of course, go behind the plate. And this lineup will change around, but that will be a much stronger lineup. Um, can't remember who was the DH later on, but I'm sure we'll find out. I'm sure Rice maybe played some DH. Um, maybe Ostremski some. And they probably had a, a regular DH after that, but we'll see who that is. If you know, you can put it down in the, uh, not the chat, but the uh, down below in the comments, if you remember who, or I may even look it up later. So, we'll see. All right, so Pete Broberg on the hill. Uh the outfield left to right is going to be Briggs, Coluccio, and Lescano. And uh, Gorman Thomas is on the team, but he's not in the starting, wasn't a starter yet. Um, he did have, a, I think he pinch ran and maybe uh, in the game yesterday, or the first game of the season. So in the infield, it's Don Money, Robin Yount, Pedro Garcia, and George Scott. As you can see, Scott, not much range there. Uh, five, which is low. And Yount didn't have much range initially, too. Actually, not a lot of range with money, either. Garcia had some range, I believe. I'm pretty sure that that's, that's how it goes. The higher number is worse, the worst number, if I remember right. I'm pr I'm, I know pretty much that's the uh, that's how the ar arm ratings go. The lower number is the lower runner. So. And, all right. So, uh, yeah, so... Then in the, in the uh, behind the plate is Daryl Porter. And on the hill is Pete Broberg. So there we go. And it also gives how many batters they can face before they start getting fatigued. So all right. So lead it off is Juan Benitez. He comes in hitting two, he hit 291 in the season with two homers and 17 runs batted in. 254 plate appearances. And he will strike out. So get some swinging. So one down. Fred Lynn up now. As you know, in 75, he had a great season. 
331 average, 21 homers, and 105 runs batted in. And I believe this was the his rookie season. So his rookie of the year. All right. And George Scott will field it on the knee and on the hands of the Broberg for out number two. So two outs now. So you can fast forward if you wanted to uh, to another inning if you wanted to. If you wanted to speed up the game, you could do that. So lots of little features here, which we'll go over as we get to them. All right, so two down. For Yastrzemski, 269 with 14 homers, 60 runs batted. So kind of a down year for Yastrzemski, too. And that's going to be a base hit. So the Red Sox have their first base runner. And Tony C up there now. So Tony C hit just 123 with two homers and nine runs batted in. So he already has two RBIs and a home run. So let's see what he can do here. And he'll pop up to second. And go see how make the catch. Ten the inning. So that's it for the Red Sox. So after one and a half, no score. So Don Money will lead it off. In the second against Lee. And Lee's numbers were he was 17 and 9, so he had an excellent season in 75, 3.95 earn run average, 1.32 whip. So he he will he won't strike out he won't strike out a lot and doesn't walk a lot. As you can see here, in, in uh 260 innings he struck out only 78 and walked only 16 uh walked 69. Yeah, in 41 games started. Uh, 41 games, 34 of them started. So he did have 17 complete games too, which is pretty good. So all right, so Don Money up there now. Money comes in hitting 277 with 15 homers, 43 runs batted in for the season. Oh, and that one is going, going, and gone. So Milwaukee will go on the board first. Home run to center. And Milwaukee is on the board first. So he hung one there and money did not miss it. So next up will be six Del Escano, 247 hitter on the season. 11 homers, 43 runs batted in. And that's going to be a ground ball to short. Burleson up with it. 6-3 on the putout. So one down now. And it'll bring up Daryl Porter. 252-32 hitter on the season with 18 over 60 runs bet in. And hard ground ball the first. Yastrzemski is up with it. And beats him to the bag for out number two. That'll bring up Pedro Garcia, 225. Six homers, 38 runs bad in. And a rare strikeout. Swing and a miss. And that'll do it. But on the Don Money solo homer, the Milwaukee takes a 1 0 lead after one and a half. So that'll be Petroselli. Evans and Montgomery. If anybody gets on Burleson against Broberg, but now with a one nothing lead. Petroselli, nearing the end of his career, hit just two thirty nine with seven overs, fifty nine runs batted in. And that's gonna be a ground ball to money. So five three on the put out. For out number one. And Louis Tion, see if we can show his stats. He had an excellent, well, decent first day. He faced 25 batters in five and two thirds innings, allowed five, just five hits. Did walk three, then struck out only one. 
No, actually, that's get. I'm sorry, that's against the righties and lefties. <coughs> Let's see. Um, he pitched seven and a third innings. There you go. Faced 33 batters, allowed just seven hits, three runs, all of them earned. So a quality start. Walked four and struck out only one, and hit a batter. So he had an okay outing. Not too bad for his first of the season. So, all right, Dewey Evans up there now. 274 hitter for the season. The 13 overs, 56 runs about in. Steps in the box. Here we go. And it'll be a strikeout. So, strikes out swing for out number two. So, that comes Monty, Bob Montgomery. 226 hitter. On the season with two homers, 26 runs bad end. Had an RBI yesterday, which was the game winner. And he's going to get a base hit. The Red Sox get their second hit of the day. Two out single. Scott will hold him on. That was not a threat to steal. That'll bring up the rooster, Rick Burleson. 252 hitter, six homers, 62 runs bad end. See what the Red Sox can do here with two out. And he will draw the walk. So, Red Sox with a two out threat here. Other in scoring position for Doug Griffin. Doug Griffin had a two run single in yesterday's game. Just a 240 hitter with a homer and 29 runs batted in on the season. Here's the pitch to Griffin. And that'll be it for the Red Sox as a hard ground ball to second. Garcia to Scott. 4 3 on the putout. And that will do it for the Red Sox. So after two, 1 0 Milwaukee. So we back out on the hill. He'll face the number nine hitter, Yount, and then Colusio and Briggs. So Robin Yount, 267 hitter, eight homers, 52 runs batted in a full season. He looks in for the sign. Here's the pitch. And that's going to be a base hit up the middle. So a lead off runner is on for Milwaukee. So to bring up Colusio. Yeah, and gets his lead. Yastrzemski will hold him on. He looks over at the runner, kicks and delivers. Looks like he's gonna try to get the lead, and he's got a good chance he'll be on the move. Here he goes, Montgomery, and Montgomery throws him out. So Mob Montgomery throws out the out trying to steal. So one down now, and now with the base is empty. Pitch to Lucio. And that's going to be a number in front of the plate. Montgomery up, up with it. Over to Yastrzemski for out number two. So two down now for Briggs. Briggs 0 for 1 today. Pitch by Lee. And it's going to be a base hit. Pass the diving Griffin into center. Lynn cuts it off, throws it back in, holds him to a single. So two outs run on first for Henry Aaron. Aaron's one for one today. Single his first time up. Oh, he's going to draw the walk, so it's Mark, he's got something going here with two down. First and second. For the Boomer Scott. See what Scott can do with two down here. Oh, and the Ephus pitch gets him. So Bill Lee with a slow curve. 
gets Scott down on one knee and makes him look silly. And that'll do it. So after two and a half, one nothing Milwaukee still. So top of the order, Benica is up there. 0 for 1 today. And that's going to be hit hard to left. And Briggs will make the catch. Shy of the warning track for out number one. Here comes Lynn. Lynn looking for his first hit of the day. And a little line on the left. Briggs gets a great jump and makes the easy catch for out number two. Then Ovidia Bostromski had a two-out single his first time up. And swung on a mist on the hard slider. And that'll do it for the Red Sox in the third. So one nothing Milwaukee after three. Don Money, who put the Brewers on the board in the top of the second with a homer. To the plate now. And this is going to be a little fly to shallow right. Evans comes in for it and makes the catch for out number one. So that'll bring up six to Lescano. 0 for 1 today. One out here in the fourth. And a swing and a miss. So on the curve again. So he's got the cur curve going early here. We are ready with three strikeouts, which is a almost a career high for him. <laughs> three strikeouts in one game. All right, Daryl Porter up to the plate now. 0 for 1 also today. Let's see if we can make it 0 for 2. And that's a soft liner trapped by Brosson at short. Tosses to Porter. And out at first. Tosses to Scott. I mean, um, Yastrzemski out at first. So after three and a half, still one nothing Milwaukee. So Canigliero entered the game batting 500 with a homer and two runs batted in. And that's going to be a slow ground to the third. Money kicks it, and it's going to be an error. So Tony C will reach on the error by Money. He'll be held on by Scott. So let's see Petroselli next. Who's up after him? Evans. I think we're going to. I think we're going to have him. We're going to have him bunt him over. I'm going to bunt him over. Let's try a bunt here. Oh, it's not going to be good. Poor Bunt. He gets, they get the lead runner, so Petroselli did not get it out too, out too, did not get it far enough away from the plate, and Porter pounces on it and throws the runner on its second. So Evans up there now. One down. Maybe we'll go a little hit and run. We'll try that. And that's going to be a base hit. So the hit and run works, and Petroselli will make it to... Yes. I'm going to try it there. You got it with the hit and run there. Oh, just barely in there. Oh, no. Actually, 283. We have to wait for that last roll. So Red Sox have runners at the corners with one down. So tying run 90 feet away. Montgomery with a chance to get an RBI here. Just one down. He already has a base hit today. Ah. And lazy fly ball to right. And Petroselli is going to tag. 75% chance we got to try it. Oh, he's going to be thrown out. <laughs> so Petroselli gets gunned down trying to score. And remains one nothing as we head to the fifth. 
Had to try that with a 75% chance. All right, but the roll was not good for the Red Sox, so we head to the top of the fifth. Milwaukee with a one-run lead. Garcia, Yount, and Koshio up. And that's going to be a base hit. The lead our runner on for Milwaukee, trying to add to their one nothing lead. Robin Yount up there now. Singled his first time up. Just thrown out trying to steal. Being held on. Garcia being held on by Stremski. And it's going to be swung on slowly around to the third. Over to Petroselli over to Stremski. As Garcia takes second. So run in scoring position with one down. And I'll bring up Colusio. 0 for 2 on the day. Oh, and that's going to be a base hit. Let's see if they're going to send him. And it looks like they will, and he'll score from second. So Milwaukee will take it, add to the lead now 2-0. On the RBI single by Colusio. And it'll bring up Briggs. Briggs 1 for 2 on the day. So Lee already has given up 6 hits. Here in the 5th inning. Down by 2. And here he goes. Throw from Montgomery is a good one, but he beats it out. So stolen base for Clucio gets in scoring scoring position now with one down. So Briggs with an RBI opportunity here. Oh, and that's hammered to no man's land between Benitez and Lynn. That'll go all the way to the wall, and that will score. Lucio from second easily. So Briggs with an RBI double and it's 3 nothing Milwaukee now. So that'll bring up Henry Aaron. Aaron 1 for 1 with a walk. Just missed that one. And Evans will make there for the out. Let's see if he tags. And Briggs will tag. Close play, and he's in there. Normally you don't challenge Evans, but this time he does, and gets in there under the tag. As it's 3 nothing Milwaukee now. So the Boomer Scott up there now, hitless on the day. Struck out last time up. Huh? And that's going to be a base hit to Scott. Pass the dive of Griffin. That will bring home the run easily. And it's 4 nothing now. Some stirring in the Red Sox pen. That brings up Don Money. Don Money, 1 for 2 with a homer. Scott gets his lead out first. Just trying to hold him on. And swung on deep to center field. Lynn goes back. Leisurely back and catches it there for the out. But damage done is... Milwaukee puts up a three spot, and it's now 4 nothing as we head to the fifth inning. Scrambling in the Red Sox pen, as that might be Lee's last inning of work there. So Burleson up there now. And bullet towards short. Yount can't claim up with it. Sails past him left field for a base hit. So the leadoff runner is on for the Red Sox. All right. So to bring up Doug Griffin. Griffin 0 for 1 on the day. Burleson gets his leadoff first. Not likely to go anywhere. Down by four. And swung on ground ball to short. This could be two. Oh, it gets through, though. So, something happened there. They're going to call it a base hit. So, first and second now. So 
So the Red Sox are the first two runners on for Juan Beniquez. Beniquez 0 for 2 in the day. Runners get the elites. And that's going to be a base hit by Beniquez. Sharp hop past Garcia. 81% oh, chance, though. Even though there's nobody out, we're going to try it. <laughs> so the run comes in. Griffin holds at second. So Red Sox on the board now. 4-1 to one on the RBI single by Beniquez. As we pull up the game on on um, baseball reference to see what we see who see who come um, came in. Let's see here. Let's see, I think it was this was April 9th. Yeah, looks like it was. Milwaukee won this game in actuality, seven four. So we'll see if we can. Uh, Change that around a little bit. So first and second, still nobody out for Freddie Lynn. Playing 0 for 2 on the day. Diego Segui also came in, pitched 2 and a th two and 2 thirds innings after Lee went 6 and a third. So let's we'll see if maybe we can get another inning out of Lee. First, let's see if we can uh, score some more runs here. So Lynn steps in the box. Sporber looks in for the sign. Looks at the runners. Here's the delivery. And that's going to be a walk. So very careful with Lynn. And that will load the bases for you, Stremski. So let's see what Yaz can do. One swing of the bat could give the Red Sox the lead. Yeah, steps in the box, ready to grip and rip. Here we go. And is it? Oh, that was in the home run thing for the for a short while there. I thought that was going to be a grand slam. What a tease that was. However, that will get a run home anyway. And Yastrzemski gets the ground out. So 4-2 now. So two runners in scoring position now as Lynn moves to second. Benitez the third. So Canigliaro, Tony C with a chance to put the Red Sox on top here. Or at least tie the game. Fly ball on the left field line. Briggs chases it. And we're going to try to score it. Why not? And catches it up against the wall. And Benitez will tag and score now a 4-3 game. So the Red Sox match Milwaukee's three spot and make it a one-run game. So Tony C comes through with an, another RBI. So Rico Petroselli up there now for two in the day. Chance to put the Red tie the game here. Nope. Smoked the short. Yount with the grab to end the inning. But the Red Sox put up three. And after five, full, it's 4-3 Milwaukee. So the Red Sox close the gap there. Lee back out on the hill. This will likely definitely be his last inning. See if we can get through this inning. Lescano up there now. He's 0 for 2 on the day. Oh, that's going to be a base hit. To the left. Need our funner is on. So that brings up Porter. We'll leave him in. Lefty on lefty. It's kind of being held on by Yastrzemski. Porter 0 for 2 on the day. Oh my goodness. <laughs> And that is going to be a triple for Porter, and that will bring home Lascano, and that will be it for Lee. As 
Daryl Johnson comes in and I will get to show you the if I remember how to do this here uh, bench and pen so definitely one of the coolest features on this game of any game just about I've seen baseball game is the whole bench coach thing which is really cool which basically shows you the percentages and the um, of each matchup matchup percentages is pretty cool so let's see here so let's go with let's look at Diego Segui here so Lee would strike out the next batter here um, z 0 to 145 and then 685 is an out with Segui now it goes up to 756 so a much better matchup against uh, against Garcia is him. If you did, you could also check out the other one, Bridget Cleveland, 764, even better. I might go with him. Actually, no, we'll go with Siggy since he actually pitched in the game. So we'll try him out there. All right, so we're going to bring in Diego Siggy. So that doesn't put, that just shows you the matchup. So, and you can play around with the other guys coming up and everything too, which is pretty cool to show you the matchups there. So very good for matchups and everything there. Really cool. Really cool feature, which I always liked in this game. All right, so we're going to get Sigi here. So you highlight Sigi, and then you highlight he's going to come in as pitcher. If it was a National League, you would hit nine, but since he's not in the lineup in American League, you just hit this, and that will bring him in. So there he is, starting pitcher. Well, pitcher. All right, so Sigi in there now. Sigi. 482 earned run average, whip of 161, so not the greatest. Uh, on base percentage 361, 2 and 5 record in 71 games, walking 43 and striking out 45. So here we go. See if we can get uh, still nobody out. So the Red Sox will bring the infield in. Let's see here, fielders will bring the uh, will bring the infield in. There we go. All right, so Sigi looks in for the sign, looks at the runner. He is a delivery to Garcia. Strikeout would be nice here. Oh, that's going to be a walk. Not the worst thing. But Robin Young is up there now. We're going to bring the uh, infield in again. So you got one for two on the day. Trying to keep this a two-run game. Oh, a base hit now. Ah. <laughs> so that will score the run. I see it moves to second, so now a 6-3 game. So Red Sox, the defense, infield playing back, double play death. Lucio up there now. He's one for three with an RBI. Also stole a base and scored a run. Little forward to the right. Evans makes the catch for ouch number one. All right. Red Sox need a double play here now with Briggs coming up. He's had a good day though. Two for three with a double and an RBI and a run scored. As Milwaukee doubling up on the Red Sox, six to three, and that's going to be a walk. So, oh no, it's not. Last little roll there. Griffin has it. Shasi Shemsky, the runners will move up. So, two runners in scoring position for Aaron. Sagi really needs to get Aaron here. He needs to bear down and keep this a three-run game. Already two runs in. Here's the pitch. And that's going to be a walk. Being very careful with Aaron. But now he's going to deal with Scott, who has a much better season. So Scott could break this wide open now with a long one. Garcia is going to be very careful with him. Base is loaded. 
to the boomer and oh Yastrzemski Petroselli Yastrzemski so third to first and that will do it but Milwaukee scores two and it's 6-3 as they get two of the three runs the Red Sox scored back so now a three run lead the Red Sox will have Evans Montgomery and Burleson definitely the lineup does not look as good without Fisk or Rice in it. <laughs> but that will soon come to pass. And Evans strikes out swinging for out number one. So Broberg with a three-run lead here. As we get a little bit of lag going on here. Oh, come on. There we go. All right, sorry for the lag there. All right, so Montgomery up there now, one for two on the day. And fly ball, deep center field. Colusio goes back at the wall and makes the catch on the warning track. So two down now. That'll bring up Burleson. Burleson one for one with a walk and a run scored. And he'll get his second hit of the day. Two out single. So that brings up Doug Griffin. One for two today. Scott holding Burleson on. Sets and delivers and Lucio will make the catch to end the inning. So it remains a three-run lead as we head to the seventh. And we're not going to leave Sagi in there. We're going to bring in... Two. Change over the Red Sox. Uh, Drago pitched yesterday. So who do we have today? We have Money. So we have Righty, Righty, and Lefty. Righty, Righty, Lefty, Righty. Oh, boy. I know Dick Pohl is going to get sent down soon, so we want to have Dick Pohl. Nah. <laughs> we want to keep this a... We'll bring in... We'll bring in Reggie Cleveland. 31 games, 20 games started. Three complete games. Actually, he started quite a bit. 16, uh, I don't think we're bring him. I'm not sure who's in, who's going to be starting coming up. Wise, I know, didn't relieve at all, so he's definitely a starter. So we're not going to bring him in. So I think we will... Uh, tough call here. I'll bring in... I will bring in Dick Paul. <laughs> All right. I think we all actually should be should have been looking at this uh, usage percentage. Let me check check and see to make sure he's not going to be starting in the next couple of days here. So who's starting the next game? It'll be Rick Wise. And then it'll be Reggie Cleveland, so we don't want Cleveland to start, okay? The next game, we're going to go back to Tion. Yeah, it'll go back to Tion. All right, so we'll have uh, Dick Pohl come in. And he'll come in as a pitcher. So the Red Sox not with the best bullpen. After Drago and Sigi Sigi had struggling today. Alright, so top of the seventh, Dick Pohl, 442 earner on average, 4 and 6 record, 89 two thirds innings, strike out 42 and walked 32. On base percentage, 345, so not good. 
as he walks money to lead it off. So not a good start. Lascano up there now, one for three with a run scored. Stremski holding on money. And liner to first, Stremski right there. His money dives back safely. So one down now. I bring up Daryl Porter. One for three with an RBI triple and a run scored. Cole looks in for the sign, looks up the runner. He has a delivery. And another walk. <sighs> so Red Sox first and second. Garcia up there now, one for two with a walk and a run scored. Hopefully Red Sox hoping for a double play, playing a double play depth. Trying to keep this a three-run game. Stroke to left. Has a little air under it, and Benitez will make the catch for out number two. So two down now. The dangerous Robin out is two for three with an RBI. Paul gets set. Looks for the sign. He has the delivery. Oh, six, six, six. <laughs> Thankfully, that isn't out. And he gets out of it. Seventh inning stretch time here at Fenway. Red Sox down by three. It'll be top of the order. Benitez, Lynn, and Yastrzemski against Broberg with a three, 6 3 lead. Benitez, one for three with an RBI and a run scored. And good start. You see, he gets a base hit to left. So lead our runners on for the Red Sox. Scott will hold him on. Freddie Lynn coming up there now. Lynn 0 for 2 with a walk. And back to back singles. As he loops one into center. And no. We're going to keep him at second. So first and second. So the tying run comes to the plate in Yastrzemski. As Porter goes out to have a talk with Broberg, goes back behind the plate. Shremsky in the box, ready to grip and rip. And that's going to be a base hit to left. Peniquez will come around to score, and that is a 6-4 game. So Shremsky with the RBI single, and it's 6-4 but Milwaukee. So Tony C with another opportunity here. Already has an RBI today and a sacrifice fly. And do we want to pinch it for Tony C? We might want to. Uh, let's take a look and see who we got. It's not giving me the opportunity to. I'll pinch it. There you go. Pinch it. Let's see who we have available. On the bench. Oops. Do we want to bring in Bernie Carbo? I think that sounds good. He could play. He could be the DH. Or we could bring in Cecil Cooper. Ooh, both good coaches. So on base percentage is what we want to look at probably. Carbo with a 409 and McCarver with a 409. Do we want to bring in McCarver? Hmm. I'm tempted to bring in McCarver. He's our second catcher, though, so maybe not. So let's look at on base percentage. We got Bernie Carbo slugging. Cecil Cooper high in slugging. Carbo's not too bad either, 43. Ugh, I think on base percentage is our key. OPS. Let's get OPS. Carver. And I'm tempted to bring in McCarver. <laughs> He only had 22 plate appearances, so he didn't play in this game, I don't think. So let me check and see. Let me see if he did play any time. So, oops. Okay. Blackwell. Oh, Blackwell. Is it Blackwell? Yeah, Blackwell was a catcher, too. Uh, no, he's got a horrible average, so we're not going to bring him in. Let's see who played in this game, though. Uh, 
Miller, Cecil, Cecil, Cecil Cooper did pinch hit in, in game four. Let's see here. Well, game three, oh, sorry. He did pinch hit. Bernie Carbo pinched hit and Cecil Cooper. So see that Cooper had a hit in the game, so I might go with Cooper. Or do we want to go with Carbo? Hmm. My gut tells me Carbo. Cooper's more likely to get a base hit. Cooper's got a little bit better lead percentage. I'm going to go with Cecil Cooper. Why not? Let's go with the Coop. Yeah, I'll go with Cooper. So, do they have a lefty in there? Or they have a righty in there. Yeah. Okay. So, Cecil Cooper will come in. Oops. I didn't put him in yet. So, Broberg is a righty. Yeah, Cecil Cooper comes in. So Cecil Cooper had 311 average, 305 at bats with 14 overs, 44 runs batted in. Runners on first and second, nobody out. Broberg looks, looks in for the sign, looks at the runners, he has a delivery. Red Sox down by two. Oh, and Cooper goes deep, 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 and gone. So Daryl Johnson pulls the right string there and that makes you feel good <laughs> as Cecil Cooper hits a three run jack pinch hit home run and put the Red Sox ahead seven to six. Oh, that felt good. That's good when you can do that. So Val, if you're watching or whoever's watching enjoy that. Hopefully the Red Sox can hold on here. Still plenty of time left to go though. Still nobody out and Bill Castro will come in and that's Broberg's day is done as he gives up a three-run jack pinch hit home run to Cecil Cooper. Ooh, that felt good. <laughs> so Petroselli up there now. Petroselli 0 for 3 on the day. See if he can keep it going here. And that's going to be a shallow, with the shallow right, let's kind of, this one will stay in the park. Let's kind of makes the catch for out number one. Evans up there now, one for three on the day. And it's going to be a base hit to left. So Evans is on. Ooh, he's going to, we might see if we can get a steal out of Evans here. He's got some speed there. See if he can get the lead. He cannot get the lead. Dives back. So, I don't think you'll be out there. Montgomery up there now. Montgomery, one for three on the day. And popped him up. Money calls for it. Makes the catch on the edge of the grass for out number two. So, that brings up Rick Burleson. Carlson two for two on the day with a walk. So he's been perfect today. See if he can keep that up. No. Hit the center. But Clusio is there to make the play for out number three. But the Red Sox score four, highlighted by the three run pinch hit bomb by Cecil Cooper. And the Red Sox have a seven six lead, so Oh boy, we gotta take out Pole. We can't leave Pole in with a one run lead. <laughs> Definitely not. Now is where we have to play using the manager. Using the uh, bench manager here. This is where it's gonna come in handy. So we can't do Cleveland, Tion, uh, or Wise. Okay. Drago is available. I don't know if we want to bring him yet. Let's see. Who do we have coming up here? So, let's, why do they show the Red Sox lineup? I don't care about that. Uh, let's see here. So, let's go to the bench coach. So, it's going to be Colusio. Garcia, so righty's coming up. Okay. So we don't want to put a lefty in there. 
I think we might go with Drago. Let's go with Drago. Yep, Drago is going to come in. Hopefully, he'll have a little better day than yesterday. All right, so Drago is going to come in. Has to hold the one-run lead here. So let's take a look at his stats for the season so far. So yeah, 6.75 ERA with WHIP of three. But uh, he did have a 3.84 earn run average. A two and two uh, record. It's 72 in the third innings. He did get the win as the Red Sox did come from behind, but it wasn't pretty. So okay, so Drago in to face three righties. Colusio to lead it off. Actually, no, he doesn't. I'm sorry. Briggs is the lefty, and then Hank Aaron. That's okay. All right, so Drago looks inside. Colusio, one for four with an RBI, stolen base, and a run scored. Need to get the leadoff guy out here. Cannot let the leadoff guy reach. Oh, whoo, I thought that was gone. <laughs> Instead, it's a strikeout. Whoo, get some swing and just misses that. That was a hanger. A one down now for Briggs. Briggs two for four with a double and an RBI. So having a good day. Drago looks in for the sign. Monty flashes the fingers. Here we go. Big bounce to the second. Griffin up with it. OBD Stremski for out number two. Red Sox four outs away. Okay, Hank Aaron. He could tie it with one swing of the bat. Aaron, one for one with two walks, so they've been very careful pitching to the home run king. Let's see what he can do here. And that's going to be a base hit, so he'll remain perfect. So two out single. Aaron is on. Still has some speed left in him. Stremski will hold him on. Boomer George Scott. One for four with an RBI. Drago's got to be careful with him. Doesn't get any easier. Payoff pitch and lifted to right. Evans lopes under it and makes the catch. So as we head to the bottom of the eighth, the Red Sox up by a run. 7-6 on a three-run blast by... Cecil Cooper. As Cecil Cooper moved into the DH role. There he is. Fits nicely in there. So Castro still in there. So Griffin will lead it off. Griffin one for three on the day with a run scored. And he'll strike out swinging. Out number one. So top of the order, Benitez. Two for four with an RBI. He got the rally started, I believe, last inning. So two for four with an RBI, two runs scored. Tap it a short, you out plays it, slings it over to first for out number two. So that'll bring up Freddie Lynn. One for three with a walk and run scored. Here's the pitch. Deep left field. Briggs goes back, way back. And on the warning track, just shy of the green monster to end the inning. So they go to the ninth. So the Red Sox up by a slimmest of margin, 7-6. Trey go back out to try to close it out. Money is already homer today. We'll lead it off. He's one for three with a home run and a walk. Pitch by Drago. Kicks and deals. Got him fooled him there. Looking for something else, definitely. Gets him for out number one. Two more outs to get. Six to Los Cano up there now. One for four. The run scored. And 
And that's going to be a base hit. So a tying run is aboard with one down. Oh, no, I'm sorry. And that was a... Uh, it looked like it was going to be a, a single there. But Lynn makes a spectacular catch, diving catch, on the plus there. So that overrides the, uh, the single there. And Lynn makes a diving catch there for out number two. So, Maki down the last out. Daryl Porter up there now. One for three with a triple. Porter is a lefty, so he's got to be careful with him as Torrego is not much better against righties than he is lefties, at least in Strat he is. Let's see what happens here. At least in 78 he was. I don't know how he was in this year. Here we go. And popped him up. Burleson backpedaling, calls it, makes the catch, and that will do it. So another exciting win for the Red Sox. Highlighted, capped off by a three-run blast by, pinch hit blast by Cecil Cooper. And the Red Sox come down from a 4 nothing deficit to win 7-6. So back and forth game for a little while there. But the Red Sox have the last laugh there. So let's take a look at the box score. So yeah, here's where you can fast play it and everything. You have options to do. You can undo the play here, which is always nice to have. Bench coach is already in here too. So let's take a look at the box score. So we'll take a look at the newspaper box score. So let's see here. So actually, let's take a look at the extended box score. I think that will give the lot wins. One isn't. No, it doesn't. So actually, let's just. Uh, we're going to um, exit out of this and get the, because uh, that'll show the totals and the wins and losses and everything in here. So let's, uh, but yeah, definitely an exciting game. So let's exit. Yes, we'll make it official, definitely. So the Red Sox improved to 2-0. and So 75 season already proving out to be exciting. With two exciting wins, Cecil Cooper. Definitely his player of the game. Tick Paul gets the win. So let's take a look at the box score now. The full box score. So definitely an exciting game there. We'll look at the extended one. Why not? All right. So this is going to have the totals on it. Yes, it will. So Dick Paul gets the win. Okay. So let's go over the whole pitching stats. Bill Lee goes five innings. He struggled today. Six runs on all the Mern. Ten hits. A lot of double, triple, a homer, and a walk. Struck out three. So he pitched for the cycle, I guess you could say. Um, Segui pitch, pitches an inning, allowing one hit. Walks two. He was pretty ineffective. Dick Pohl came in and did well. He pitched an inning, walking two. It wasn't pretty, but it was effective. And finally, Dick Drago comes in and pitches two solid innings, allowing just one hit, striking out two. All right, for the uh, Milwaukee, Pete Broberg goes six innings, allows seven runs on all of them earned, including the bomb to Cooper. Eleven hits, one homer, that bomb to Cooper, two walks, struck out four. Bill Castro pitches two innings, allowing one hit, so striking out batter. So he pitched well in relief. For the Red Sox, Juan Benitez goes two for five with two runs scored in RBI. Freddie Lynn, one for four with a run scored. Walking a batter, Yastrzemski, two for four with a run scored. Two runs bat in. Tony C didn't get a hit today, but he did get an RBI, 0 for 2. So he was pinch hit for which was the managerial decision of the year <laughs> after only two games. But Cecil Cooper, so the mayor wasn't sure whether to do Cooper or Carbo, and they went with Cooper, and that was, it paid off. So that bench coach definitely helped us with that by Cooper hitting a three-run bomb. So Petroselli 0 for 4, Evans 2 for 4, Montgomery 1 for 4. Burleson two for three with a run scored. And 
Doug Griffin with a hit base knock and a run scored. So that's it there. You can see your scoring plays here if you want to read through that, but that's okay. All right, so close that up. So let's just fast play the, the rest of the games today. So very quickly it'll do this. Or fairly quickly, yep, there you go. So there you go, the uh, Chicago White Sox beat the Oakland A's eight to five. And this is cool, I like this feature on this. As it says, Oakland had 20 hits. Oakland had four errors. Wow. So definitely a feast for the Oakland hitters. And uh, not so great with the uh, defense. Wow. Look at all those runners there. 16 runners on base for Chicago. Oh, third. we got to take a look at that box score. Just to see that those 20 hits there. Uh, let's see. I guess we'll just go with the spot score. Oh, it was a 14 inning game, too. That's pretty amazing. Wow. 20 hits, though, for Oakland. That's unbelievable. So, Sal Bando had four. Joe Rudy had four. Not a lot of runs for 20 hits. Only five runs for 20 hits, so. And Reggie Jackson unbelievably goes 0 for 6. Wow, that's weird to see. You don't normally have it. When your team scores, uh, hit gets 20 base hits, you normally don't have somebody who goes 0 for 6. Wow. So, Jim Cott, another rare thing here, where the White Sox led, gave up 15 of those 20 hits in 8 innings. Wow. But yeah, another nice little feature about this game. It shows you the uh, kind of the, the rare things that happen during the day. Pretty cool. So the Dodgers beat the Reds 4-1. to one. Montreal goes over St. Louis 6-2. to two. California over Kansas City 4-1. to one. Minnesota over Texas 4-3. to three. And 9-3 Atlanta over Houston. So let's take a look at the next day here. So the next day, I don't see any Red Sox games here. So I'm going to fast forward it through this one too. See if we get any cool stuff coming up. Let's double check. I don't think yeah, the Red Sox aren't playing. So just the two game series. See if we get any more cool results here. Nope, nothing new here. Uh, Dodgers beat the Reds 13 to 9. Slugfest there. But no special stats there. And I'm pretty sure the Red Sox play the next year. Yeah. So the Red Sox will move on to Bob Baltimore where it's Rick Wise against Mike Quare. So, yeah. Okay. So, let's see here. Let's go back. Let's take a look at the standings after just a couple of days. Uh, definitely don't want to restart. Where are the standings? Season overview. I think that's it right there. There you go. So the Red Sox with a 2-0 record. So, they should put them in first place. But... <laughs> Tied for first with everybody else, I guess. There you go. And then little early leaders here. So these all have pictures on them eventually. I wish they put the team, the team, the uh, um, team that they're with too in here, not just the batter, but uh, whatever. AL leaders, NL leaders. So, yeah, so this goes all the way down to, so quite a few stats in here. And you have your Cy Young votes. Dick Pohl leads with 15 votes. That definitely will not stay around. That's funny. And Dick Drago, the Cy Young Award winner, uh, leaders for, <laughs> that's pretty funny. Uh, and then the National League ones. And then who's hot at the plate? That's pretty cool. Current hit streaks. Of course, it's only two games for the Red Sox anyway. And th these highlights are cool. I like looking at these. 
It's also bring you, if you go on this right here, it'll bring you right to the box score, which is cool. So there you go. Watch Dick Drago command the strike zone. What? Oh, I hope he's not starting. No, he's not. I don't know why they state that, but that's interesting. Probably because he's done so well so far. And then you get your reports here, which is another cool thing. These are all cool. League batting. All your stats here. You can sort them and everything. Um, and then you have your transactions. This is what I was talking about. These are all the official transactions, which is really cool um, for each team. So if we go to the Red Sox. Oops. Where are they? Oh, right here. So if we go to the Red Sox, just to show you. Uh, transactions. So just to show you, Tony Tony C will be deactivated in June. He'll go on the DL, and Ashley McCarver will be in June. So McCarver is on the active roster, so we could have used him. Again, I think. We, and Fisk will be activated from the DL right here, you can see, on June 23rd. So yeah, he started the season on the DL. Dick Pohl will be deactivated later, and Juan Beniquez will be on the DL. So Pohl and Beniquez will both go in July. Jim Willoughby will be called up. Juan Beniquez will come back from the DL. And Dick Pohl will be activated from the DL in September. And you have Tony C. being called up on the 1st of September, but then on the 2nd, he gets released, so September 2nd. And another cool thing, Butch Hobson comes up for some games in December. I mean, in September. September call-up. As well as Rick Kruger and Kim Andrew but and Steve Barr. But definitely Butch Hobson is the interesting one there. So these are all the transactions for the Red Sox during 75 seasons. So not a lot. as much, Not as many as I thought they'd be. So let's just kind of look at, let's look, take a look at another team just to, let's see, who else would be interesting? Uh, I don't know, let's just take a look at Oakland, I guess. Oh, and transactions. Eh, nothing too exciting there. So there are some columns coming up. Yeah, nothing really exciting there. Let's let's do Cincinnati. See if the Reds had anybody interesting. I know this video has gone on quite quite long, so we'll end it soon. But this is pretty interesting to look at. I think. Well, not much for the Reds. Of course, when you have a great got a great team, you don't have to. So Don Gullett went on the DL for a little while. But he was activated in. In August. So nothing too exciting there. Dan Dreesen activated from the DL in the 15th. Let's see who Milwaukee is. Since we just played Milwaukee. Jerry Augustine. Remembered him. Alright. So that's enough for that I think. So, really cool stuff there. And you can make view players and make roster moves. So you can uh, bring do roster moves through this. Heal injured, deactivate all, activate all. So you can do all kinds of roster moves on here if you wanted to. For each team. This is the Atlanta team. pretty interesting. There you go. And yeah, schedule editors, all kinds of different things you can go through. I'm not going to go through it all right now. You can restart at any time. So there you go. So let's go open a different library. So these are all the uh, ones that are available. And I think there's custom ones you can do too, if I remember right. But I know it goes all the way back to, nineteen. 
1959, pretty much. And then it skips around to 54, 53, 52, 51, 50. And then it goes all the way through 49, 48. And then it doesn't... So 47 through 42 aren't in there. And it go, then it skips around now quite a bit. So very sporadic seasons. And 1908 is the earliest one they have here. So I know there's other custom leagues I think you can download too. So I'll have to check those out again. But yeah, definitely a very cool game. And we're glad we got it back again. So there it is right there. So since 2011. So it's definitely made quite a few strides. I'm sure Clinton Parks could, would agree to that one too. So that is it. So take care. God bless. And thank you for joining us with a, another look at Diamond uh, Digital Diamond Baseball. And if you'd like to see more, let me know. Uh, if you'd like to see any particular games from 75, let me know. Um, and maybe we'll play a game every now and then, if not. So take care and God bless. And we'll see you in the next Digital Diamond Baseball replay. Take care now. Bye-bye.